Yo, I'm Tripolar Bear, and this is five reasons that you're dying every single map. Number one is going to be your flasks. It can be a few things here, so we're going to go over two of them. Number one is going to be your flasks going down in the middle of a pack of deadly monsters. At this point in the league, honest to God, it's 5C per flask. Every single one of your flasks should have instilling orbs and glass blowers invested into them by putting them on the crafting bench and doing the used when full enchant. All your flasks can do this, so you don't have to worry about wasting all of your instilling orbs. You can put them straight into the crafting bench and get this craft done nice and easy. But before we do that, let's talk about your flasks. Your flasks might just be bad. If you don't have some of these mods I'm going to mention on your flasks, you should go and buy them, as it's very important for your character's whole defensive profile that your flasks have been invested into. If you don't have increased armor or evasion and you're using determination or grace, then you need to use those, right? If you're using determination, you need armor. If you're using grace, you need evasion on your flask. And if you're using both, then you need both. Another really important mod to get is going to be reduced curse effect. This is extremely important because when you come up upon a vulnerability, if you come into a Ellie weakness map and your res isn't already figured out, it's going to be extremely painful, especially if you don't have a lot of fismit and you get cursed with Vuln, it's going to be really, really bad. And it's probably one of the reasons you're dying. Another one that you can get on flasks is going to be the crafted flasks. And that's going to be regen or reduced mana cost. And these can help your total kit, right? Reduced mana cost can help you rein in whatever mana issues you're having on your build. The 3% regen can help you out regen some of those dots, right? It all adds up. It's not going to be a one-stop shop, but it's all these little pieces. All of these crafts can come together and make your build. The last thing I'm going to mention about flasks is how much you should invest in them. Honestly, if you have a decent build going on, you should spend 50c on your flasks or you should be alt spamming them yourself on each flask because one of the best mods in the game right now is the gain charges when you're hit by an enemy on your flasks. This, combined with the used when charges are full, keeps your flasks up nearly 100% of the time during your mapping experience. And this even helps you keep your flasks up while you're bossing, right? Which is a huge issue because of how important defense on flasks is, it's going to suck really bad if these go down during a boss encounter. And the gain charges mod is one of the only way to keep your flasks up in a boss encounter. So it's very, very important that you get these. Now, even if it's not gain seven chargers, right? Three can still be good. Four can still be good. Try to get that mod and any other decent mod on your flasks on every single slot, right? Treat your flasks as if they are part of your character's gear and identity, right? They're very important. You should be crafting your flasks just like you would any other piece. And you should feel good when your flasks are done. These can carry over to other characters, right? You might say 50C for a flask, that's a lot of money. You can bring this over to every build. And now every build you play this league will have the used when chargers reach full. They'll have the charge gain when you're hit by an enemy. And they'll have the evasion, the armor, the crit, or the reduced curse effect, and whatever else you'd like. Attack speed, cast speed, regen, etc. Number two for the five reasons you're dying every map with one extra reason right at the end, so make sure you stick around, is going to be you not having any physical mitigation. Now, I've done so many POB reviews on my stream, twitch.tv slash tribalhobra, come check me out. And most of the issues I've been encountering with people saying they have low survival is that they just don't have any physical mitigation. They have no endurance charges, they have no armor, they have no risk damage reduction, they just have none of it, right? They come in here and their max hit is exactly equal to their life and energy shield pool. It's it's very, very bad. And that is going to be a huge reason why you're dying. For armor, I recommend getting 20,000 minimum armor. This is very easy to obtain if you get all armor evasion pieces, if you have a granite with percent increased armor, and if you use determination and defiance banner. Generally, this and maybe a few nodes on the tree should get you to about 18 to 20k armor on most builds. The second suggestion here is to get some endurance charges. There are many ways to generate endurance charges, especially if you're left side of the tree, it becomes much, much, much easier. Uh, so I'm going to list a few of these off for you guys. Number one is going to be smashing strikes. This gives endurance charges on melee crit. It's not incredibly useful for most builds, but if you're cast on crit or if you're left side of the tree and you're a crit melee build, this can be very nice, right? As an anointment or if you're stabs, you can path into it very easily as well. Another one's going to be enduring cry. You use it next to a pack of monsters or next to a boss and you get an endurance charge. Uh, enduring composure is a small cluster that gives you endurance charges every second if you 
you've been hit recently. Warlord's Mark can give you endurance charges as well as the Red Dream and the Red Nightmare for on kill. You can spec into on the tree, Discipline of the Unyielding or Overcharged for charge generation on kill or Aggressive Bastion for on kill while holding a shield alongside a few Timeless Jewel mods. You can also generate endurance charges on block with Deflection, Enduring Ward, and Rote Reinforcement, which are cluster jewel mods and one of them being on the passive tree itself. The last way to get some easy physical mitigation is going to be physical damage reduction, which can be obtained on body armors and shields fairly easily, especially in softcore. These are pretty easy mods to buy because they're very, very slept on by the softcore trade community. Number three is having no critical strike mitigation. Getting crit can be a huge spike in damage taken, and if you're not careful, that spike is going to be more than your life. So an easy way to mitigate this is through the passive tree masteries or the shield mod. Every single crit wheel has the, a 30% reduced extra damage taken from crit strikes mastery. There's an armor mastery for an additional 30% reduced extra damage from crit strikes. Sanctum of Thought has 30. It's a wheel before Templar and in between Marauder. Body armor corruptions can have 50%. So this is something really nice to look forward to on Skin of the Lords, uh, if you have those, or Loyal, whichever one. Uh, Watch Your Eyes with Determination can go from 40 to 60. And of course, Brass Dome makes you take no extra damage from critical strikes. Quickly, if you don't know how this mod works, the reduced extra damage taken from crit strikes means if you get to 100, you take no extra damage, right, from a critical strike. It becomes a normal hit. If you have 50% and a normal hit would deal 100, the crit makes it deal 300, then you only take half of that extra damage. You're having that extra 200 that you would have otherwise taken from the crit. This mod is very, very nice and getting even just 30% can help you rein in all of those extra damage spikes. Number four on our list is going to be you clicking altars without reading them. I get it, man. I get it. Okay. I don't like reading either especially when I'm playing games. So it's a huge issue right now, especially with the bonus extra mods they've added to the altars, all the extra buffed ones, which are just shredding everything. So let's talk about a few of the ones that you probably should read and how you may be able to counter them. Number one for the altar mods is going to be you having 75 cold res and you click on minus 50. Uh, you will get one shot every single time you take that damage, right? You've got 75 cold res, you click minus 50 cold res. Now you've got 25. You're going to die every time you take cold damage, probably, right? Uh, uh, that's a really bad one. And if you keep clicking altars and not reading, you're probably going to click Fizz is extra cold. And now you're super going to die every single time, right? Uh, these mods combo together and they create some really nasty scenarios for your characters. So if you can get a little bit of overcap resistance, that can help a lot. If you use a Sapphire Flask to overcap, that can help a little bit too. Although it's not the most reliable, it should work most of the time if you've got gain charges and use on full. Uh, but there's a few other ones that will just shred your armor and evasion or your physical mitigation leaving you as vulnerable as a zero armor Andy. So it's a little bit of a tricky game, but so long as you juice your build hard enough, you should be able to take these on. But if you're not there yet, you might want to chill out on clicking all those altar keystones like Wrath of the Cosmos, which makes you take 25% more damage every altar you click, right? You're adding a 25% shock to yourself every single altar you click. That adds up so quick. And now every time you take damage, you're almost getting one shot. The double altar upside and downside, also very juicy, but it comes with a ton of added risk. So you have to keep all of this in mind. Number five is going to be you having no chaos res. PoE in the current year requires chaos resistance if you don't want to die to the ever added chaos damage to the game. Delhi bosses have chaos damage. Altars add fizzes extra chaos. There's constant degens and poisons added everywhere possible. I recommend that every player in softcore shoot for at least zero, but at 30% chaos res, it becomes much more comfortable to play against chaos damage, especially all those toxic balls that are constantly chasing you, constantly trying to explode on you. A little bit of chaos res is going to stop two or three of those from killing your character completely. And the on death after effects are going to be a lot less annoying. I promise. And the bonus reason for why you're dying so much. This one might hit a little bit home and I'm sorry for that. That's why it is number six, the secret bonus lesson. Uh, straight up, I'm going to keep it a buck. You might just be playing bad or incorrectly, right? It's hard to tell when people get
give me their POBs and their character looks like it should be fine for map, but they're telling me that they die a few times per map still. It might just be a player skill thing, right? You might be playing incorrectly. There's just a skill gap. You throw your trap and you stand still waiting for it to explode. You can't do that, right? Shield charge into the pack, blinding them as a saboteur, lay your trap down, shield charge out. You can't throw a trap and then just stand there as all the monsters hit and shoot you, right? That's a skill issue and that needs to be solved. Another scenario is going to be you standing still, backtracking or not bobbing and weaving through tight, narrow corridors. So how PoE works is the monster AI currently doesn't track your character outside of that one guy where you get the Quicksilver flask from in Act 1. <laughs> Keep in mind that wherever you used to be, the monster is currently shooting or attacking. This is especially important in Delirium content where the ground effects are constantly popping off where you used to be. You'll see me doing Delhi. You'll see everyone doing Delhi. You have to constantly be moving. And this is true for the base game too. You always need to be moving. If you stand still, if you're waiting, even if you're looting sometimes, you're letting the monster get a sniper shot on you. And sometimes you're letting multiple of them get those shots on you. And then you die, right? So keep in mind, if your character gets stuck for 0.5 seconds, uh, you are in the danger zone. If you stop moving for a quarter to a half of a second, there should be alarms blaring inside your head. It should be, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. I'm about to die. And you need to be holding flame dash, holding shield charge, whatever your movement ability is, dash, whatever. You need to get out of there because if you stand still for even just a little bit, all the monsters are loading and they're about to unleash a big old bomb on you, okay? You gotta move. You can't just sit there and watch. This isn't one of those games, all right? You're gonna go from 100 to nothing. You gotta get out of there and you gotta move. Anyways, I'm Tripolar Bear. Thanks for watching this one. Like and subscribe if you like this. Catch me on my live stream or check out my other YouTube videos. I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, peace out.